So we've downloaded the C3 Express ETH project to the XPR2 panel. You just need to click Run. This will start loading the project in runtime. It takes about 30 seconds to load. You can see we have the Compax 3 turned on, powered on with the 24 volts. We have a blinking green LED, which means it's disabled. The, it's connected to the ETH80 cylinder with two uh, normally closed position sensors, one for the extend and one for the retract position and um, the MPP motor. Now the Express C3 ETH driver is loaded. You can see that there's five panels that have been already configured for you. There's the JOG, IO, Status, Teach, and Run. Go ahead and click JOG. You can see there's the enable button. Once you click that, you've got a solid green LED on the Compax 3. And there's two no stop inputs. Go ahead and click both of those. These are two different bits in the control word the XPR is sending to the C3. Both have to be assorted for motion, then you can jog and retract the ETH cylinder. If you continue the extend until you hit the positive end of travel, the drive will stop and hold position. You get a solid green with a blinking red LED. And you can see on the ETH cylinder that the extended ETH uh, position sensor has turned off, indicating that it is in the fully extended position. So on the jog panel, how to recover from that is that you can toggle the enable input and that re-enables the drive. You've got a solid green LED and then you can jog off of it. Say if this was uh, in a panel and you didn't have access to the Compax 3 or the ETH cylinder, if you jog back off onto the sensor, if you want to then go to the next panel, which is the IO panel, you can see I6, which is the uh, positive end of travel is lit, is activated. Uh, we'll come back to this panel here in a second. On the jog teach panel, let's go ahead and toggle the enable again. We can jog off of it. If we want to adjust the jog speed, you can do that in this panel as well too. And you can see the actual position, the actual current. You also can set up the jog acceleration as well, too. In the I.O. panel, you have the uh, four inputs on the X12, which is your uh, registration input. I4, I5, and I6 are your limit sensors. I7 is your home. We're not using a home sensor on, on these configurations, but it is possible. On the outputs, there are four outputs on the X12 connector. You can turn those on and off here to test those wired up to whatever you have them connected to. As a reference, I put that output 0 is uh, X12, pin number 2, so you don't have to look those up in the uh, manual or the help files for the C3 Servo Manager. The, the next screen is the drive status. This shows the motor's actual position and velocity. The target position is where it's commanded to be, and the difference of it and the actual is the position error. This screen also shows the current motor current in milliamps. On the right side, we see the last five errors. Note these errors are in decimal format. If you're familiar with the C3 Servo Manager's optimization window, the errors there are given in four-digit hexadecimal. This is just a format change, but if you want to know more specifically what causes that error and how to remedy it, go into the C3 Servo Manager online help and search the word error. The first result is the error list. Then if you click on that page and do a find, which is you hold the control key on your keyboard and press F, then you can type in the decimal number to jump down to that error. If ever you get a fault, which is a solid red LED, you can try acknowledging the error by doing a drive disable and en enable. If you uh, cleared what's causing the error, then the error will clear, such as if you power up the 24 volts but not the AC mains, 
uh, and try to enable the COMPACT-3, this will cause a fault. If you then apply AC power to the C3 and toggle the enable input, it'll clear the fault. The next menu is the teach menu. Since all these moves are absolute moves, the first thing you need to do is home the ETH. So let's go to the home. You can see the enable and the no stops haven't changed since the jog panel. So it's reading those tags and you don't need to set them again after changing panels. For the express ETH configurations, homing is set to home to the negative end of travel, the one closest to the motor. So it's important that you have the sensor positioned correctly. This should be set based on the quick setup diagram. And here's the uh, quick start guide in there. I've uh, put the ETH, the um, position sensors, which are uh, in duplicate of what's in the ETH uh, manual. After it homes to this negative uh, limit, it will then move extended 10 millimeters and then reset this as the zero position. After this is done, you can see the actual position has been reset to zero. So go ahead and click home. We hit the minus end of travel. We bounce off of it, come out 10 millimeters, and then we've set the position to zero. So we're at home. You can back out of this to go to the teach menu and then go into move number one or you can just use the, the, the toggle arrows to move to uh, move panel number one. You can jog it into position. Let's go ahead and jog this out to let's say 10. Then you send the position to the C3, so you can now see move number one's target position is 10. And then if you want to test to make sure that moves okay, you know, jog off of it. We're at four now, and then if you go ahead and click go to move number one, it will then start the move at a speed of one, excel, decel of 10 millimeters per second squared, and finally reach the actual position. So if we want to change that speed to go faster, we can just click on the button here. We can change this to 10. If we want it to accelerate faster, that would then accelerate up to speed at 10 millimeters per second squared, which 10 divided by 100 would be a tenth of a second it would take to accelerate. So position uh, move number one has been taught. We can go ahead and move, click the move arrow to go to move number two. If we want to then jog it out to position 20 and then send that position to the C3. Then we can go to move number one. This moves out to back to there. And then if we want to go to move number two. So we can continue on. There's uh, 31 different moves. Um, 32 if you include the zero move, which is the homing move. When you're done, go back to the teach menu. And at the bottom, you'll see on the bottom a big button on the bottom that says after teaching positions click once save C3 flash memory to retain on the positions in flash memory. And this does a write to flash on the C3 so the moves are retained after cycling power. Now that the positions have been taught and saved to flash you can go to the main menu and then go to run. This panel allows operators to select any of the 32 different moves. Note there are two no-stop inputs on the bottom and they enable just like the jog screen. We've already home, so we don't need to rehome. We can see the actual position is in the bottom right. Select move number one and then start. It will now move to position one, which is 10 millimeters. And then if we want to move to position number two, and then start. 
One other note is that when you first power on, since all the moves are absolute moves, you have to home first. So if you jump to this screen after cycling power, you need to click home and start first. That way it establishes where the zero position is. If not, if you then start to try to do a move first, when you first enable it and then do the start the very first time, it will actually still go home to establish the zero before doing any absolute moves. So, and this concludes the demo of Parker's ETH Express Solutions.